Um, and I'm just going to turn to Cathy and David a minute to check. Are we, we're expecting procurement to join miraculously at a certain time, are we? Yes. Yeah. Do we know what time they're joining us, Cathy? Quarter to 11. Course to 11. Okay. Oh, course to 11. Right. Okay. So is everybody comfortable that when they join, we, we'll finish the item that we're on and move to their session, if that's okay. Okay, so <clears throat> welcome to the, um, the Audit Committee, um, Audit and Assurance Committee, Tuesday the 12th of April. It's the first one that we're doing um, in person and as a hybrid. So. Um, so this is going to be a bit of trial and error, I suspect. Um, I want to just test whether um, the system works each time. So if I don't see hands, can you just shout or wave with both arms? And um, we're, we're trying to do a lessons learned, aren't we, since, since the board in March. So we'll see how it all works. Um, so I wanted to welcome um, to the meeting um, but at procurement, but I will do that when they um, arrive. I understand that we have, yes, I can see Gareth, Gareth Levington. Congratulations and welcome to. Thank you. Yeah. Um, and um, I also wanted to welcome Jonathan to his first. Audit and Assurance Committee, you Thank seem you, to have been here for a while <laughs> already, <laughs> but welcome to your first you, meeting. Um, so we start off with any apologies for absence. Happy? Happy? Apologies from Claire James and Pamela Summers. Okay, thank you. Um, do we have any declarations of interest? Okay, thank you. Um, so if I move to the draft minutes of the <coughs> Audit and Assurance Committee meeting held on the 7th of February, which is going to be a problem because I'm just told that I haven't got enough memory to open the page. So that's going to be um, a bit of a problem. So has anybody got one I can look at? <laughs> Good old admin control. Down again. Okay, so if we go through um, for accuracy in the first instance, page by page, page one, two, three. Sorry, I thought somebody was speaking then. Four. Uh, morning, everybody. This is uh, tech support. I think because we have Hugh logged in on one device, uh, so we have two devices in the conference room logged in at the same time is what's causing the feedback. Um, so you might need to make sure that both mics aren't turned on at the same time. Eight, four, five. Um, so if you, if you could try turning off your mic, see if that helps, please. Six, seven, eight, nine. Can I take those as an accurate record of the meeting? I'm not sure that anybody apart from me was actually at the meeting. So, uh, board, so what do we do in that instance? That's fine. Okay. Okay. So, um, it's still echoing, isn't it? It's good for a second. Yeah. Can we move on to the action log? Um, so there are only two actions arising, um, and both actions have been uh, incomplete from last meeting. Okay, thanks, David. 
Um, and are there any matters arising um, from the minutes that aren't on the agenda today that anybody wants to raise? No? Okay, thank you. Okay, so we'll move on to part two now. Um, the first item on the agenda is the approvals process for commissioning education as part of the strategic review of education phase two. And David, are you going to present this? Sorry. Yeah. I, I am. Uh, I am. Uh, it is. I, I am. I have to say, just for uh, to switch over to uh, translation. Yeah. Agi. <laughs> Gymunion uh, Dwyf Cymru uh, ac Alffan uh, ac mae'n amlenell y proses ar gyfer cymeradwyo, contractau, a hefyd y proses y crathu uh, sydd wedi cael ei roi i le. Um, uh, um, gan fod wedi cael ei syrryd yn, yn gan y bwrdd um, a thefnos nôl a'i ddim fewn i'n bynolder. Uh, felly gofyn i'r pwyllgof nod i'r proses ar gyfer comisiynu contractau a ddys newydd fel rhan o can dau o'r proses. Well, I'm a and we man all the hard work and work all the time. Okay, thank you, David. Um, have we got any any questions on this? I think it's been fairly well considered at both the Education and um, Quality Committee and and at the board. So, um, Chair, can I just ask, um, <coughs> forgive me, because I wasn't, uh, as you mentioned, at the uh, the previous uh, audit committee, although I was at the board committee where we discussed um, this. Had this come to audit for consideration before it went to board? Was it can be a subsequent step? It, it, it's 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 very subsequent. Why? Yeah, it's, it, I, I thought it's coming for, for, for noting. So okay. the, the the if the, the process kind of anticipates that there'll be a role in terms of monitoring uh, progress and scrutiny for both the education the committee and the board, uh, but not uh, for, for the audit committee. So it's just for auditing, just to confirm that the audit committee is on site. This report, right? Okay. That's the second completion. Sure. Sure. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, um, Okay, so moving on to the audit inquiries letter. Um, Rihanna, um, so the appendix one sets out the draft form response to audit Wales for um, the audit crisis of charge of governance um, and management letter for 2122. Um, the committee are asked to review the draft response. We're, we are aware of one change that we need to make to um, the version shared. And the point six is a query about, are we aware of any fraud within um, NWSSP and THCW? And we actually wrote to the two organisations to ask they could confirm. Um, we've had um, confirmation from Helen that that is going to be picked up as part of the Wales audit. Um, approach to auditing the Libra and Shed Sisters through the audit team there. So we'll amend this response and that will show that as the, um, as the action. But are there any other queries I suppose in respect of the version shared? Okay, thanks. Thank you, Rihanna. Obviously I had an opportunity to, to see it prior to it coming to, to the audit committee. So we've had a discussion I know on those points. So um, has anybody got anything that they want to raise on this? Hello, did you want to come in at all on this? Um, just to say thanks for a, a very timely and detailed response. Um, it's much appreciated when we, when we get these responses as, as early as we can in the audit process. So, so thanks to, to you and the management team for doing that. Thanks, I'm sorry, um, I, I didn't flag up through on it. It's actually two places where we would make those amendments if two, two questions were to um, share services. I just, um, sorry, I didn't, didn't flag up to you. Yeah, 
sorry, a few technical hitches going on behind the scenes, Ian. So, um, so that's fine. Um, thank you for that. Um, and the committee are asked to review it, which um, we have um, thoroughly, um, and approve the submission of the letter to Audit Wales. Happy to do that, yes. Thank you. Okay, the next item on the agenda um, is internal audit. Paul? Thank you, Chair. Um, I'll take the, the progress report first of all, and then Ken will briefly chat through the two reports that are on the agenda today. Uh, so, so in terms of the progress report, just a, just a few updates on that since this was um, um, presented to the committee or tabled to the committee. The um, obviously the risk report is now has now been finalised. The uh, it's, I'm referring now to table table one in the report two point one. Uh, the strategic readiness for digital, we have received management responses uh, to that report, so we'll be looking to uh, finalise that very shortly. Um, and then moving down into table two, um, just say a few things around this. The um, bursary field work has now completed. We're in the process of just of putting the draft report together, um, which we'll be looking to issue hopefully later on today. And the um, the training program director's um, review is is uh, work in progress at the moment. So that started since this uh, uh, progress report was submitted. Um, just more broadly, then, you, obviously we're we're towards the back end of the year, and there's still a little bit to be done. Um, I, I guess it's just a bit of a reflection that um, it's been a challenging quarter. We've had um, We've had a, a, a fair few COVID cases and, and sickness cases within our team. Uh, you know, I, I, at the last audit committee, I flagged that we were. It was you know, just just more broadly just raising the, the sort of challenges ahead. Um, so we've had a, a fair amount of sickness, and I guess coupled with um, that need to move some of these reviews back into the quarter four, and um, uh, and and in some cases a bit of a bit of a slowness in getting some of that information from management. I guess that's purely because there's a bit of there's sickness in, in both sides and, and, and that sort of thing. There's various uh, variables at play. So so it's really just a point to flag that, as I said, it, it, it has been a challenge where we're, we're edging towards where we need to be, but it's we still need to make sure that we're getting that that good level of engagement and um, and we'll, we'll push on to get things over the line in the next uh, well, very shortly. I'm happy to take questions on that. Thanks, Paul. Questions, yes, Jonathan? Thank you, Paul. If I can just uh, turn to the um, the two items that are work in progress, as you said, the bursary system and the performance and governance arrangements. Um, I'm just wondering, um, has has an indication? Uh, or could an indication now be given as to when when those pieces of work will be concluded? I think it would be useful for us to have uh, some time scale because obviously if audit committee is expected to, to track the progress of internal audit, it would be useful just to have an idea as to, I'm not saying, you know, by 12 noon the week next Thursday, but if, you know, if, 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 if there is an indicative time scale within which the work is being undertaken and completed, I think that would be very helpful. And perhaps the future reports, accepting the fact that COVID is clearly a very exceptional set of circumstances, and that it might be useful to have as part of that running commentary how on track things are, and you know if things are slipping, uh, what the impact of that is likely likely to be. Thanks, Jim. Yeah, absolutely. Um, more than happy to uh, to um, add additional narrative into the into the progress report to help. Um, you know, explain the position to um, to committee if that if you think that's helpful. I'm more than happy to do that. Um, it, so, so in terms of these um, these last two pieces of work, um, we've got a, we've got a, a load of information which we're working our way through at the moment. Um, so, I, I would be hopeful with a good wind, we'll be looking to wrap this up in the next couple of weeks. It's you know, I, I guess we just need to make sure that we've got that that good level of engagement. We're getting things through, and um, we'll do. We've got our very best to get through everything. Okay, thanks. Thanks, Paul. 
all. I mean, <clears throat> we have we had a number of discussions, I know, during the year about making sure that things progress and that everybody's aware of the importance of an internal audit. And I, I, I kind of get the COVID bit, yeah. but it ought to be panning out a little bit by now. And we're in April and we've still got a couple of pieces of work to finish. Um, and I just wondered um, what we need in place, I guess. I mean, Jonathan's um, suggestion, I think, of when we can expect those pieces of work is helpful, but yep. it is always reliant um, on you getting the information and the cooperation from this end. Um, and I, I think as an audit committee, I'd quite like to make sure that we're monitoring that sufficiently in the coming year because it's been I think a little bit slower than anticipated um, in the last year, but I think going forward, I think we've got um, probably, um, I'm not saying that, that COVID's an excuse, um, but less, I think, room for manoeuvre going forward. So perhaps um, we can have a think about how we, how we um, quickly escalate perhaps to the audit committee any any issues with with engagement or um, supply of documentation? I mean, there'll always be some delays. I'm not yeah. Effect, but. Yeah, that's a good point. And, and we have we we have monthly meetings with David, and and as things are, you know um, come to my attention, then we'll, we will we flag them with with him as well. So it's you know, it's very helpful in that respect in, in terms of turning the wheels. Um, um, but yeah, well. We'll always we'll work on that, and we'll we'll try and um, try and make sure that those 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 wheels are turning appropriately. Thank you. Okay. Um, can I, I don't know. Um, before you go into the other reports, whether I can see that procurement have now joined us. I believe. I think I can see two two faces there. Um, so, Kenneth, would you mind if I um, turn to the procurement item and then come back to the reports? Yeah, that's fine. Thank you. Um, <clears throat> okay, so um, perhaps I could um, welcome, is it um, Lena um, Bogosian and Janine Kreese, who I don't think have been to the audit committee previously. Um, so very warm welcome to both of you. Um, I understand we had a presentation from Jonathan about the new operating model. So, um, so I assume now that um, you are part of our new team um, going forward. So um, I don't know whether Rhiannon, you wanted to, to say anything by way of introduction or? Um, so just welcome to Lena and Janine. Um, so, I'm not sure who is going to present this report, actually, because it's my understanding that Christine was going to be attending to present the final one, um, but I can't see her on screen. So, Lena, Janine, um, who is who is due to um, present this report from procurement? Yes. Uh, hi, everyone. Uh, we agreed it's 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 Christine. Uh, this would be her her final uh, presentation. Uh, to the committee, uh, I just uh, I just dropped her a, a message. Uh, yeah, we can see Christine. We can see Christine. Yeah. Hi, Christine. Hi, Lena. Hi, everyone. Welcome. So, are you are you okay to pick up this um, report with um, the update from procurement? Yes, I am. That's fine. Thank you. Okay, we moved, um, we, we halted internal audit midstream, um, Christine, because we knew that procurement were joining us um, at a certain time. So, um, so um, whenever you're ready, um, go ahead. Okay, thank you. And um, thank you also, obviously, for allowing us to join midstream. So it's appreciated. Um, the obviously the documents you've already got before you. So the cover paper is the standard cover paper confirming um, all of the single tender actions, 
single tender, uh, sorry, contract change notes, um, and also obviously anything of exception. Um, the, there is one outstanding action in terms of the procurement improvement uh, plan, and that is regards to the setting up of the clinics um, to make sure that obviously there are kind of drop-in sessions available. Um, I'm, I believe they're in the diary now, but I will actually uh, defer a second to um, Lena and Janine if they're on the call. Well, I know Lena's on the call. Um, Lena, Janine, are they actually in progress now or are they going to commence after the end of April? Hi, Christine. I can confirm that they commenced at the start of April. Every Tuesday, members of the team now are present within Tedusky and um, in, during the morning, um, anyone can link in with them either virtually or um, can drop by to the communication section where they can go into a pod and discuss any matters of concern that they wish to discuss. So I can confirm that effective from last week, they, they commenced. Okay, thank you, Janine. Um, on that basis, obviously, with the new team coming in, uh, one of the things, well, one of our aspirations, certainly as a service, is that there'll be much more greater focused attention on the organisation and its overall work plan. Um, I don't doubt, as I would, that Janine and Lenny will want to review, obviously, the procurement improvement plan just to sense check that obviously everything is going as it as as was intended. Um, can I therefore ask the committee whether they're now happy for this action to be removed from the committee or would you like a further report going forward? Um, personally, um, I'm happy for that to be particular items to be removed but um, as the committee will know um, we, we've taken a keen interest in the improvement report and so um, personally I would value um, a report coming back to endorse that all those um, improvement actions are indeed um, happening um, so I, I would certainly appreciate that um, from Lena and um, Janine. Thank you. Okay. okay, and also just to um, obviously something that maybe Ginny and Lena wouldn't be aware of is obviously the action that we have regarding the validation of the contract program. Um, so just to bring to David's attention that obviously that that session is due because we committed to reviewing every six months. Um, we last reported in November, I think it was. So obviously we need to um, undertake that exercise again. Okay. Okay. Moving on to um, Appendix One in terms of the summary information provided. Um, obviously, what we're trying to do is make sure that we're capturing all activity and that we have those safeguards in place. Um, an earlier draft of the report was circulated, um, which members may have seen, and they will know now that one has been actually been removed. The reason for that is that additional information came to light. Um, after we'd actually submitted the report. Um, so Janine and I were a lot more comfortable removing that particular line and we will report it at the next audit committee because we didn't want to give um, you know, part information. So it, just in case that anybody um, has spotted that, it's in relation to Hammett Street Consultants Agreement. Um, so there aren't any issues of major concern. Um, the OG simulators and obstetrics for gynaecology, um, because of the links to uh, the Society of Ultrasound and Obstetrics and Gynaecology, um, we were very limited in terms of the actual equipment there that we could purchase um, because it was all also integrated into a training programme. Um, there were we were, there was due diligence undertaken um, and we weren't able to find an actual reseller market or competitive market for that particular kit. Um, the access to the Pharmacological Society material, um, this one is one I believe that we actually looked at at length um, because there are different elements that can be obtained from these societies and it doesn't necessarily go to say that just because it's quoted as being um, the only source that it is actually indeed the only source but we were satisfied with that one. Um, the control change note for the EDI enhancements within Guella, um, obviously with an IT system when you're continuing something um, it, it's not well you wouldn't be able to 
to in most cases to actually uh, secure a different supplier and that is a contract change to an existing agreement anyway. Um, additional air conditioning units, um, again same reason, you wouldn't introduce a further supplier into such a sensitive and restricted area. Um, fundamentally tip or typically what happens is that if there is an issue and these units have to work together so they do need to be technically compatible. Um, the the risk would be that you'd have two suppliers in there and if something went wrong um, you'd never be able to get to the bottom of it so it's always preferred option for those type of environments to keep the continuity of the supplier. Um, Welsh translation, um, a further change note, the I think it's fair to say, and also I'm glad that David's here, is that the whilst we've been looking at this one for a little while, the growth in demand for Welsh translation, um, I think, continues to exceed expectations. Um, so what we're doing is working with David and the team at the moment to make sure that we've got an agreement that is sufficiently flexible to support the needs of the organisation and that it can take into consideration growth. So I believe the team are working with uh, procurement services, are working with HEIW colleagues on that one at the moment, um, just to try and nail a clearer position in terms of the demand. The enhancement to the overt system within pharmacy Again, a uh, critical enhancement to current provision, so it was executed via a change note. Um, this is an interim measure until the actual learning management system that has been formally re-procured will go ahead. The STA for behavioural science training, um, first submission, no particular concerns. And I know that um, procurement services are working um, with the service, particularly workforce um, in terms of you know, the strategies going forward. The provision of the dedicated server environment for two separate servers, again, continuity of service for technical reasons. So whilst there is, I can appreciate a lot on here, um, there isn't anything that we would strike as particularly as out of the ordinary. Um, the extension to the CPR training for dental practices, again, it, this is just a requirement to report extensions and so on. So again, it's extension provision that was included in the original agreement. Um, the transfer of essential, uh, transfer and implementation of the essential children and adolescent mental health service, um, no further action. Um, I think this one was an, unanticipated, uh, but also to finalise the delivery of work. Again, you wouldn't necessarily want to bring in an additional provider or a separate provider by a competition because you would actually potentially you know, erode the original value for money element. Um, any additional provider that would be bought in would have to probably start again, um, which would obviously cause duplicate costs. The so before I go on to Appendix 2, which has two items, um, shall I quickly stop and see if there's any queries with the first appendices? Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Christine. I, I just got one quick one, I suppose. Um, and I understand um, the reasoning behind some of the contract extensions. And um, as you quite rightly say, um, once you have a supplier, um, it's difficult to change that. Uh, I only have one question, I guess, is um, in terms of timing of letting um, or renewal tenders or contracts, are we confident that we've um, programmed in sufficient um, sort of time to do that, using the word time all the way, um, um, in a timely manner? So if I picked on the dental one, Lubus Medical looks like we're progressing with renewal tender exercise and therefore we've extended the contract. Should we have done that earlier, I suppose? Are we confident that we've got all our contract renewal dates and the timeline needed to get there in place? Yeah, what I need to do on this one is that we, we have a clear programme in terms of what is due for renewal. Um, Janine and I have had conversations about this recently in terms of how do we provide that additional assurance um, that things are being done on time, that the appropriate triggers are being followed. Um, and I'm, you know, 
I hope I don't ever have to come back to audit committee and retract this statement, but I think we're fairly confident that with the additional due diligence um, that's going on at the moment, um, the, you know, the resourcing and the work that's been put into that to assess um, the level of, you know, resource that's required, I think plus a combination of, you know, the team that's moved across into the national sourcing team it's part of a much more structured environment and a focused environment um so i guess setting aside any resource issues that we just can't foresee as the situation we were in last year um then yes i feel fairly comfortable that we've got a better handle on it um but also with that additional um due diligence that we'll undertake obviously with david and the team to make sure nothing else has come up or arisen um but also in terms of i think the strategy going forward using the data um looking at not only new opportunities but also making sure that these existing opportunities as you say are renewed on time you know for instance if it's an oju if you're considering an extension um, of an OG, you really would be looking 12 months prior, at least 12 to 18 months. Um, that's just to make sure that both the organisation, HEIW colleagues resources are lined up, as well as the procurement team. Um, whilst obviously we can't always foresee that, you know, events will happen that could potentially derail us, the intention is, you know, for lesser value, um, I might need to defer to Janine on this one, but for something of lesser value, lesser complexity, you'd be looking at least, at least six to nine months before in an ordinary situation. So my original um, question, I guess, was um, the contract register, is that complete? Do we know the absolute dates when we should be starting the process? Set aside resourcing, because I'm going to come to resourcing eventually on, on procurement. But so are we confident we've got every contract buttoned down? So in other words, was was this one started late? Um, I don't have that information to hand, but I can find out. Okay, so um, so but do we have every single contract and the time scales? Because we did take we did have a contract register way, way back at the mm -hmm. beginning of the AAC, but I can't well, remember. We, we consider uh, every, every, every November. So every November. Yeah. Sort of yeah, I thought we had. So, so. And that, that contains uh, the, the real risk. Yeah, yeah. So we shouldn't yeah. get into a position where we've got any late ones. No, we, we shouldn't be, but the you know this is why we need to undertake further due diligence um as i said we have pulled one off the register because we do have a concern but we need um you know to do our own investigation and satisfy ourselves because what we wouldn't want to do is to report something to audit committee that we felt was inaccurate um so that is you know for us that's part of the due diligence process but also um obviously before i started to present this report which is why i've raised the issue with david so a gentle reminder we need to do that further validation again um and to be honest with you because it is a moving feast we need to make sure that we are undertaking these checks on a regular basis because that is the only way you know sometimes it, things do you know we still get contracts that come across the desk this is not unique to HEIW where, you know, a member of the service maybe wasn't quite aware of the procurement rules. They've gone off and done something in isolation. When that happens, it takes a little bit of time actually to pick up on it. And it's after the event, which is what the file note process is for, because we still have a, the additional checks and balances to make sure that even if it hasn't been caught up front as part of the planning process um, that it will actually be caught at some point. The bi-monthly meetings that are put in place, that's another opportunity. Um, the work that I believe will be continuing um, with Martin Panels and also obviously the quarterly reviews. And again, they the gate checks to make sure that the service is being provided as it should be and that we're not missing areas. All right, I'm gonna keep keep on this. I'm a bit confused now. So if the audit committee have signed off all the dates every November, mm -hmm. 
and you've got bi-monthly meetings. I'm a bit puzzled as to how we can possibly miss anything. Well, the main way that we can miss something if it's not been brought to the procurement team's attention beforehand. Surely and that is why we have the additional the, the additional quality checks in place and the gateways for the bi-monthly meetings. We've got a list that's been approved by the audit committee. That's, that's not a secret, so procurement would have that. So how would, how would it be missed? Sorry, Christine, to labour this issue. No, it's fine. If there's, say, for instance, additional expenditure granted and it's not brought to the attention or the requirement to the attention of the procurement team that a procurement actually is required, sometimes, you know, there are situations where there are opportunities for funding um, and bids for whatever reason they get put in in isolation. It does happen, unfortunately. Um, and then, you know, action is taken which maybe the finance team weren't directly aware of all the procurement team it's you know this is the you know if you're asking me for one a one you know you're asking me for a hundred percent assurance what i'm saying is that whilst i'm not comfortable to sit here and give you that 100 percent assurance i am comfortable to sit here and confirm that we do believe that we've now got sufficient gateways in place to make sure that we don't miss anything or if something happens in isolation, that we're able to act quickly um, and to make sure that there is a compliant position restored. So, <laughs> so we've got a list, sorry to keep on that, we've got a list, if we get additional money, the Anon knows about that. If we're going out, to spend it, then the executive team know about that. So is there a step in the process that's missing somewhere? I think it's generally, you know, communication, but that is why we're putting these processes in place. What I'm saying is that if it's not brought to the, the attention of the procurement team, everything that is brought to our attention, yes, I can give that assurance of. Um, and if the plans don't go as we, we expect them to, then we put um, mitigating action in place. But if expenditure arises last minute, end of year, then that becomes a bit more tricky to manage. And I think for me, that's a much more honest, more honest reflection to the audit committee than just to give a carte blanche, yep, yeah, everything is perfect. You know, it's it's a working, it's a constant moving piece and a work in progress that needs constant monitoring. Um, I do have, a, uh, Ginny and Lena, I can see, wish to come in. Um, so if you're happy, Chair, I think we need to bring, you know, two colleagues into this as well. Okay. Um, who would like to go first, Lena, Ginny? Sorry, I'm labouring the issue a little bit because I think we need a bit more assurance. All right. Thank you, Lena. Are you happy for me to go first? Yep. Yeah. Okay. Thanks. Thanks, Lena, and, and thank you, Chair. Um, with regards uh, the the review that I've undertaken since uh, taking over the the management, the direct management of the work portfolio, I've undertaken a full, extensive review of the register, and I've also asked for additional work plans to be pulled together as this is going to be critical so that we can appraise resource and ensure that we can meet all procurements in a timely fashion. We've also uh, requested meetings with your planning directorate within HEIW as we think that this is also critical as part of our future planning and robustness to make sure that we have appropriate resources. So these meetings will hopefully be beneficial for both parties in that we can both act as gatekeepers so that we have a full information flow as, as early as possible so that we can again ensure that we have appropriate resources. In recent discussions that we've held with Rhiannon and Beckett and, and Martin Pennell, we've also discussed what steps can be taken and the audience for potential issues that may occur if, for instance, there is new monies, there is new work that, that is being picked up and addressed, how we manage that shortfall in resources, whether it's that we put forward a, a proposal 
to extend a current arrangement and utilize that resources to, to plow into uh, new needs that may arise. Um, but for that, that decision to be made formally and for it to be documented as to what we're able to deliver and what we're not able to deliver. So um, it's very early days for Lena and I as, as we go through this, this journey and um, we're very happy to be here today and, and to be present with Christine. Um, it's, it's quite complex, as you can imagine, the handover, um, but that is an update from myself in terms of the steps and actions that I've put in place in, in the early days since taking over the, the management of this work portfolio. I'm not sure that reflects back on your question, Chair, with regards to the list that was established for the audit committee in November, and I will need to pick up separately with Christine to just verify and cross-reference that list. Um, it may well be that I'm, I'm cited in another format, but I um, just need to make sure that I've got full information with regards to that. Thank you. Okay, that's very helpful. Thank, thank you, Janine. Lena, did you want to add anything or does that pretty much cover it? Very quick, quickly, thank you, Chair. Uh, just the def our default position is obviously the, the work starts from a contracts register, as you mentioned, and that's the contracts register whereby we review and update it on an annual basis, and that will be the reflection of our planned work. Uh, so based on the contract register, we aim to deliver our requirements, uh, with uh, service requirements uh, according uh, to the register, which would be our uh, annual pipeline uh, project list. Uh, uh, obviously, that's, that's how we measure our performance. Uh, to assure you uh, what's on the contract register, and once we have an updated version of that, uh, we will aim to renew uh, whether extension or undertaking new uh, tender activity according uh, to, to the register. However, uh, as Christine mentioned, under uh, exceptional circumstances where there is an urgent requirement for a procurement activity, which is not included in the register, it's not part of our annual planned work, uh, that requires a separate attention and might have a resource implication. Thank you, Chair. All right, I think, I think unless you've got anything to the time, Jonathan, I think we, we'd probably like something coming back, I think, to the audit committee um, once you've done the work and the due diligence to, um, to, to, to see whether there's anything from our end, um, from Rihanna and David's point of view, that we need to button down here to make sure that nothing slips, slips the net. Okay, thank you. Sorry, I'm really sorry um, to labour that. Okay, Christine, carry on. Sorry. Christine, you're still there. You've got your hand up. Yeah. Um, Janine, Lena, I'm not quite sure what, what you want to do in um, while we unfreeze um, your colleague. Um, do you want to, to take the rest or do you want us to move back to in, internal audit? I believe the next part was Appendix 2, Chair, that, that Christine was going to take uh, you all through. I can see that there are a number of actions that are complete and others with, with dates for a new proposed deadline. Now, Christine has the information on this. Um, what I can add to this, I, I, I suspect, is that I have reviewed a number of reports with regards to performance. And as a consequence, I have um, issued a number of actions for the team and I do have uh, meetings planned to gain full feedback and to advance. 
from my perspective, there are some matters that are marked as complete, which potentially they, they'd an ongoing matter, they, they, they complete at a point in time and therefore they would need constant review. And, and so I have um, picked up on these matters with, with the team. Um, but with regards to Appendix 2, I don't have any specific updates, I'm afraid. Okay, that's fine. Thank you, Janina. Christine, are you now back? Christine, can you hear me? I've worked with the internet. Oh. Sorry, Chair, yes, I can. Um, apologies, it, the internet just dropped out. No problem. Um, perhaps you could move on to appendix. Completely. Um, so I am in a place of work, I'm not at home. So. Um, the We've got two, our, uh, two matters that were brought to our attention. Um, um, they, they happened ahead basically before we actually realised. One was the development of provision of accredited compassionate leadership programme. Um, we are still having discussions, I believe, um, with um, the finance team about areas that are actually co-developed. Um, they're not necessarily, they don't necessarily lend themselves well to the SFIs. Um, and the you know a single tender action I think we would have been used um, if we had seen this one ahead of time. Um, we what we're doing is looking at a range of programs that are either co-developed or funded through different means, um, which means that the the standard um, competition rules may not necessarily apply. Um, what we're doing at the moment with those is that uh, we're either still uh, single action in them as single quote or single tender actions or file notes depending on the circumstances and the timing of which it's brought to our attention um, so hopefully um, I'm not sure if Martin's actually um, on the call at the moment but it is something that we are actively following up the second one is training articulate uh, 360 in instructional design um, the current agreement expired and there was an urgent need, as I understand, for the requirement to be delivered to maintain essential skills um, at a critical point in time. So, again, it's endorsed, but through the meetings implemented with the digital team, um, then we are working to make sure that all such requirements are actually captured. So the... The, those are the only two matters that we would consider to be um, out of the norm. Um, apologies for obviously the technical error earlier, um, but one of the things I, I guess I'd just like to add, and I'm sure Janine probably covered this earlier, is that you know, following Jonathan's presentation to the audit committee, you know, the aspirations are for us to move from a reactionary service to one that is working with the service and its forward planning, it has the necessary engagement, but also obviously the dedicated team. Under the previous structure, um, members of the team were required to actually cover multiple areas. So even though they were mainly dedicated to one area, if there was a resource issue, then obviously they'd be expected to jump across. One of the benefits of this system is that particularly for the team that are supporting HGIW, they won't be called upon to support other areas. Those areas that are short will actually be backfilled from the substantive team that they've joined. And in each case, they're generally bigger teams, which means they've got a greater resource that they can pull on. So just, I guess, as a, you know, a closing statement as the outgoing head, um, that I am actually 100% behind, you know, this new national operating model, of, well, partly as you would expect, because it's what we've signed off on as a service and delivered, um, but also in the genuine interests of ensuring that the needs of the service are delivered in a timely manner. Um, and that is, you know, we've made a huge service change to make sure that we can improve going forward. Okay, that's very reassuring. Thanks, thanks, thanks very much, Christine. And yes, we, you know, we were um, very encouraged by the, uh, the new operating model. So thank you. Um, if there are no questions, do you want to move on to... You got any questions, John? No. Uh, do you want to move on to Appendix 
Okay. The Appendix 3 is the final appendices in relation to um, the procurement improvement plan, um, as we discussed earlier. Um, the one outstanding action on there is, as we've already covered off earlier, the procurement improvement plan. Um, so apologies, I think I've done that in reverse order. Um, the, as Janina said, those workshops are already set up um, and running, but also there is a plan in place to revisit those actions just for additional assurance um, to make sure that obviously the activity that we committed to is still ongoing. Okay, lovely. Thanks, thanks Christine. Um, okay, well, um, would you, are you attending, um, are all three of you attending the closed session? We've um, already checked in advance and we were advised that there aren't any um, agenda items for procurement, but I'm, I'm sure we can make ourselves available if we are needed. Thank you. Well, um, I'd just like to formally thank you, anyhow, Christine, um, <coughs> for your work and service to this, this committee um, and hope that everything goes well in, in the new operating model. Um, for you as well and uh, again welcome to Lena and um, Janine so th thanks thanks for your report okay thank you chair thank you and um, you're very welcome to stay for um, um very welcome to get on with I'm sure lots of lots of other work should you um should you wish to leave us so thank you very much to you all okay Thank, if you don't mind, we'll depart. Okay. Thank you. Bye bye. Good option. <laughs> thank thanks. you. Okay, and thanks, thanks to Internal Audit for indulgence there. And um, we'll we'll return to you now. And um, and Ken, I think you're going on the next. Um, yeah. Thank yeah. You. Okay. Morning, everyone. So. Um, we've got two reports for the committee today. Um, the first of our two reports is the program or project and program management report. Um, HIW has recently set up a program management office to oversee all projects and work programs. Our audit focused on the processes and procedures set up by the PMO, and this also included um, review of a sample of current projects and programs. I think the key message from our audit is that the project management range, arrangements put in place by the PMO are good and they're based on project management best practice and also that it would be very difficult for any projects to or work programs to actually go ahead without the involvement of the PMO. Um, the, only, the audit only identified three findings in total, so one medium and two low priority and I'm pleased to say that our overall opinion is substantial assurance. So if anybody's got any comments or, or questions, I'm happy to take them. Okay. Thanks. Okay. Um, and then our, our second report today is our risk management report. Um, we've included an audit of risk management every year since the formation of HAW and this year our audit looked at how well risk management arrangements are being embedded at directorates and department level and also how strategic risks are being monitored through the BAF. Um, as you can see from the report again we've only raised three recommendations, two low priority and one medium priority and again I'm pleased to report that the overall opinion for risk management is again this year substantial assurance. Um, and again, happy to take any comments or queries. Um, yeah, um, and lovely to get some substantial assurance. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's always very, very welcome. Um, so, so thank you for those. Um, there, there are quite a few findings in the um, commissioning report um some suggestions for improvements um i'm oh, sorry i'm on external audit apologies apologies sorry moved okay. ahead okay so thanks for those um ken so do you want to move on to the annual plan 
Thank you, thank you, Chair. I'll I'll, I'll take the annual plan. Um, one sec. Um, so uh, the annual plan then for 22 23. Um, obviously, I'll, I'll take it as read, but I'll, I'll just draw out a couple of uh, the, the key points just for um, for the committee's awareness. The, the plan is developed in accordance with the public sector internal audit standards. And what that really means is that it's, it's, it's a risk based plan. Um, we focus on the, the key areas for the organization. Um, part of the planning progress involves talking with the executive team and getting their engagement and and um, and and input into what they what the perceived uh, key risks are for the organisation. We're also mindful of the, the work that we've done in previous years and 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 more broadly the, the sort of the, the wider environment uh, within within the health service and. Uh, and the things that we see throughout the year, so our attendance at those committees and um, and sort of building up that picture of the organisation. So all of those things pull together to, to put together the plan. The detail of the plan is set out on pages 10 and 11. That sets out the programme of work for the year. And um, we have the um, uh, set out the, the proposed periods for the years, uh, for the reviews as well, when we'll be when we're looking to undertake those reviews. As I've, as I've said in, in previous committees, and I'll, I'll just flag again here, um, we, we always look to remain as, as flexible as possible um, in, in terms of our resourcing and, and what we can do with, uh, with HEIW. So mindful that things change throughout the year, um, risks change, um, priorities change within the organisation. So we do maintain that, that degree of flexibility to, to, to adapt and to, and to move us. As um, as the year progresses, um, and I guess it's it's quite difficult when we're we're um, we're putting the planning documents and agitation together until January, February, and trying to think about about what what sort of key risks there might be uh, um, sort of um, eleven, twelve months down the line. So I need to be mindful of that. Um, within the within the plan, the, the second part of that is is the charter. Uh, document which which sets out and presents um, the the arrangements and the working rate arrangements between between ourselves and HEIW and it just gives us a bit of a clear footing about how um, how we how we report and the sort, of, sort of the dynamics between the two so and that and that part of the document comes each year as well as part of the annual plan um, so today I'm I'm looking for uh, approval of the of the plan uh, including the the charter. I'm happy to take questions. Okay, lovely. Thank you. Thanks for that, Paul. It looks very comprehensive. Just, uh, just uh, two questions, my can chair. Uh, firstly, in respect of the uh, the audit plan uh, in Appendix A, uh, can I just confirm that in terms of any outputs or reports that fall out of that work, they will come back to a meeting of this committee? Uh, yes. I'm just wondering. Are we able? I'm not asking for the for the dates now because I can't have the dates of the audit committee myself. But um, just an assurance, really, that, that the dates of the audit committee uh, are being factored into when you know the reports and outputs from this work will be able to feed into those into those meetings. So I suppose just making sure that the our meetings align with whatever's likely to fall out of each of these items uh, of work for each of the quarters that they're being delivered. Uh, Paul, just going back to the conversation we had earlier about um, you know, slippage and risk and uh, what happens if things get knocked off track. I'm just wondering um, if anything has been learned about the you know, trying to complete the current audit plan, uh, availability of staff and resources and making sure that uh, illness doesn't get in the way too much. Uh, and what's been learned from that that can get applied to this uh, in the event that there may be slippage in this plan as well. I know we're not predicting or expecting any slippage, but um, you know, COVID is here to stay. You know, it wasn't just for Christmas. And uh, I think there's always that risk uh, that, uh, that something could knock some of this on, off track. I'm just wondering what's been learned and is there anything that can be applied differently? Um, well, I'm thinking but, specifically time scales, process, deadlines mm -hmm. to get completed. You know, I know yeah. that we work to certain deadlines. I'm, I'm sure there's agreement between 
our office and yours about what has to be done by when and how information is shared and what the expectation is on staff, etc. But I think knowing what we know now about the last 12 months, how do we apply or how do you guys apply that to, to this plan as well? Yeah. Um, so so in, to answer the first part of your question, really, in, in terms of the timings of the audit committees, um, we have, yeah, yes is the very short answer. Um, we have, you know, obviously behind the scenes, quite a lot of planning and, and thinking about the timings of when we can do things. And, and, and part of that, it does involve what are the times of the audit committees and when, when how is that cycle with our resourcing and um, making sure that our, audit, our auditors can deliver the team. So yes, that's the short answer to, to, to that. Um, in, in terms of learning, I think um, really it's, it's, it, for me, it's, it's always a bit of an evolution, um, trying to trying to work out what's what's the best way to address all of these bumps along the road that we get. So, um, so for example, um, again, a bit, a bit more detail really, but in, in terms of our resourcing approach, we, we're taking a, a, another refreshed approach this year to make sure that internally the communications are flowing a little bit better. So, um, you know, if if an auditor is having particular problems with the engagement or not getting that information through on time, that the chains are, that the chain of command is, is sort of flowing. So, I, so then we can raise that back to the organization. So we're always looking to refresh that and always always mindful of the, uh, the bumps on the road. You know, notwithstanding some of them a bit unforeseen, um, but, but, but you know, as I said, we, we're looking to, to progress and to make sure that we're, we're we're as accommodating as possible. I suppose, Chair, it goes back to the, uh, the old uh, Donald Rumsfeld analogy of no yeah, well, yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, yeah, it's the latter category which is more problematic. <laughs> yeah. yeah, we know there are things that we don't know. Yeah, yeah, I remember that quote. I think it's, yeah. uh, it's uh, Jonathan Ray briefly on, on the um, the progress report as well, isn't it? It's working backwards instead of the plan yeah. sort of landing. It's it's working backwards. So perhaps, um, David, perhaps that's something that you can take away in terms of um, programming certain reports in. And, that, and I completely understand that that doesn't always work for. So I'm, I am a realist. <laughs> but um, but if we at least anticipate, then it. it Probably helps you to put pressure as well on on the organisation to sort of yeah, give, you know, give a structure to the yeah, measure against. Yeah, so yeah. Other point. So I think partnership working, which is audit reference one, so that's the director of finances portfolio. So unless that is something that I'm not understanding, that well, needs I, to. No, th th thank you very much, Mr. Chair, for meeting. So that that should be meant to so it should be the director of audits and for the partnership. So and. No, and similarly, SLA arrangement is that for number six. That is the one that does it to it, the director of finance, but maybe that's a discussion we need to have. And then, so Martin's just raised that we haven't got an audit of financial system, so we've um, maybe done the delegated budget control a couple of times before, but we've not audited financial systems. But these are suggestions that we can make to get this plan to a final stage and then maybe to assess the green plan. Sorry, I, I couldn't I, quite hear all of that then, Rhiannon. I thought this plan was here for sign off. Okay. Yes, yes. And it, it's been spoken through with the, the exec team as well. I, I, I didn't, sorry, Anne, I didn't quite catch all that you were saying then. I, I, I did something about the partnership working, perhaps that's the wrong, that's the wrong exec lead. So we, we can check that. That's okay. This is that's easy. We just engage with the other person. Okay. I didn't hear the point around the uh, the delegated budget control and the finance piece. Sorry. We, so it was um, an audit of financial systems. I think we've got about suggestions, and that's not appearing on this plan. Um, so it just wasn't clear if that is an, an additional piece of work or whether. That delegated budgetary control should be 
And we, we've done a bit of a cycle on these. I think we missed out last year. We missed out the for the, uh, the financial systems. I think it just be good to have that back on just for our own internal review. Did you catch that, Paul? Yeah. Um, so, so there's a keenness for a financial systems review as well. Just as I think we did delegated control monitoring last year, if I remember correctly. Um, I just wonder if it needs to swap, 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 swap around what it says. Yeah, uh, I mean, I mean, personally, from 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 our point of view, the the financial systems work has been coming out really strongly over the last year, and you'll notice similarly that there's there's nothing specific on risk management this year on the, on the plan, but. But that's a reflection as I, as I was talking about our planning approach is that um, we're mindful of looking at how the controls and the governance arrangements are all bedded in within the organization and whether and what's the right target for, for the risk-based approach to, to our plan. So you know our, the risk specific a specific review on risk for example has, has been coming out as substantial for a number of years so it felt like in terms of the, the, the right focus for us is to do something else. And, and I think similarly, um, similarly within the, the, the sort of financial systems that's been coming out quite strongly as well, which is why we're under a sort of a, a finance umbrella. We, we were looking at sort of thinking about the delegated budgetary control. Now, if, if committee feels strongly that um, then that they would like a, an assurance review, I, you know, I, when, I was, when I was presenting the panel, I did talk about flexibility wasn't quite anticipating it quite as early on as this, but absolutely um, happy to happy to look at that. Okay, perhaps you could have that discussion offline then, and um, uh, yeah, of course, of course, yeah. Um, prove it subject to, and I hear what what Martin says. It's always um, useful to have that. Can I just ask one very brief question? I don't want to prolong the discussion. On Appendix B, um, on the KPIs, um, I don't know whether it's me. Am I reading it? correctly um one two three four five the sixth one down is that right a report turnaround management response to draft report 15 working days minimum should that be maximum um yes it should be maximum apologies <laughs> yeah that <laughs> i thought that was the <laughs> built in that i was not supposed so to that not with not and not wanted to say and clip at all, but that wouldn't help our, what we've been talking about for the last um sort of 10 minutes or so. No, that's that's an error. I will, I will make sure that's fixed. All right, thank Apologies. You. No, it's all right. I thought that was um okay, so we are asked to do a number of things on internal audit. Um we're asked to note the progress report for assurance, note project and program management substantial assurance. Note the risk management internal audit report, substantial assurance, and approve the internal audit annual plan subject to the yes. changes that we talked about. So thank you, Jonathan. Okay, thank you, Paul. Thank you. Thanks. Um, moving on now to Audit Wales. Who's going first? Helen, Davisha. Yeah, I'll, um, I'll kick off and Navish is going to come in um, shortly. So, um, Chair, if it's OK with you, we were thinking there's quite a lot of duplication between the progress report and the audit plan. So if I take those together um, and then take questions on, on either after that, if that's OK. OK, so um, today we present to you our 2022 audit plan. So we set out what work we're going to undertake this year. Um, we also note the impact of COVID-19. Obviously, things are very much changing at the moment. Um, with regards to the financial audit, we are largely anticipating this will be a remote audit again this year. Um, but we are getting the audit team in the office um, for two to three days. So um, remote as in remote from the client, but um, within our offices. So with regards to the audit of the financial statements, um, we are required to include um, undertake our work so we can provide an opinion on the truth and fairness of the accounts. Um, and we do this by seeking to um, report and adopting a concept of materiality. I'm sure you're all um, familiar with the concept of materiality and we'll report that to you um, in the next when audit committee. 
Um, so the work so far that the team have done in planning and um, interim audit um, has, has gone well, um, thanks to the officers involved for providing timely responses to our queries. So that work is just subject to review and then we'll be all ready to kick off then um, for our final audit on receipt of the accounts on the 29th of April. So just moving on to exhibit one, the financial audit statement, the financial statement risks sorry, that have arisen from our audit work to date. Um, we just have two significant risks this year. So the first one is management override. Um, so this is a risk we include within all our audit plans at all entities, as we believe this risk is um, present in all entities, but to be undertake work, as you can see in the box next to it, to mitigate those risks. And the second risk is to do with the Scheme Pays initiative. Um, I'm sure you can remember last year, we included an emphasis of matter paragraph in our audit opinion, drawing attention to the disclosure of the contingent liability within the accounts. There's lots of work ongoing behind the scenes at the moment to determine whether this liability will materialize for um, HIW and obviously we'll review that evidence and um, any consequences upon our on our audit report and opinion. Okay, and just to say as well, in addition to the annual accounts audit, we also um, do some work on the HIW's whole government accounts return as well. Okay, so at that point, I'm just going to hand over to Avisha. Thanks, Helen. Um, I thought, first of all, I'd um, go to the progress report. There's a couple of bits of work that are um, outstanding or on today's agenda. So the first one is taking the uh, taking care of the caregivers report um, management response. Um, the report was presented at the last audit committee, um, and we're expecting the management response to be presented today. But um, I believe that the management response hasn't been to the exec team yet. Um, so it'll be coming to the to the next audit committee. Is that right, David? So uh, apologies for that. I didn't manage to get the report to the exec committee in time. It has been drafted. Um, we, we, we can share it with the uh, Wales audit committee, but so we will take through the execs and bring it back to the audit committee. But I, I just apologize to the committee that I didn't manage to get through the execs so in time. So sorry for that. Um, and the next review is the review of annual commissioning arrangements, which is on the agenda. So once we've um, finished this update, I'll, I'll go through that report. Um, in terms of our activities for this year, so we're um, starting to plan our structured assessment um, work. Um, so we'll be doing the field work over the summer months. Um, so we expect some um, interview requests soon. Um, and then also our, our main piece of work this year is around workforce planning. So we're currently scoping this work. Um, the work will be done in all 12 NHS bodies, but for HIW it'll be twofold in that we'll be looking at HIW's own workforce planning arrangements, as you like your internal arrangements, as well as your wider strategic role in kind of workforce planning and supporting the whole of the NHS. Um, it's likely that we'll start this work towards the end of this year. Um, this is so that we can gather intelligence from the, the reviews we do at the other health bodies first. Um, so, but, but as, as we as we scope the work and we progress, we'll, we'll um, keep the audit committee updated. Um, lastly, that, that I wanted to mention was that um, in terms of the 20, the 2020. 2021 local audit, um, local audit work. Um, it's been discussed in previous audit committee, but um, we had intended to do a piece of local work last year, but COVID and kind of wider resourcing pressures within our um, within the health team um, meant that we couldn't progress this work. So to help kind of reset our programme of performance audit work, we're um, intending to um, refund this element of, of the work. Um, of the fee, um, and the fee will be or the refund will be pro uh, pro processed um, at the end of this financial year. Um, I don't know, I'm happy to take any questions. Um. Okay, thanks, thanks, Alicia. Um, yeah, um, we were expecting um, caring for, for the carers on the agenda, so we'll take that to the next audit committee. So. Um, Hopefully that, that's in place now. Um, did you have any questions, John? Yeah, thanks, Chair. Um, 
This may be because I'm a new member of the committee and it's possible that it's to do with the way in which I read the um, 2022 uh, annual audit plan and the, the fee structure. Um, and because it doesn't give it the context of what was happening in the previous plan, I suppose this is where my question is slightly, um, slightly off. If I'm looking at the, the fees that you're proposing for 2022, um, there's a reduction in what will be spent on structured assessment uh, by about 12,000 and an increase of around 15,000 in what will be spent on the all Wales somatic and local work. What I didn't get a sense of in the report was how and why that balance of work has shifted. And I can't imagine for one second that uh, miraculously structured assessment work has become £12,000 uh, cheaper uh, and the all Wales somatic and local work has suddenly become £15,000 more expensive. But what I'm trying to figure out is how the balance of work has changed, if that, if that is what it is, uh, and how this looks different to, to last year. And I suppose it's a context bit. So I wasn't sure what was done last year by way of um, that balance between structured assessment work and thematic work and how the plan for 2022 looks different to last year, because I'm guessing it is different by virtue of the fact that we're spending more on one and less on the other. Thanks. So um, I, haven't, I haven't got last year's plan to hand, So, um, but the way I can explain it is that, um, that the, the, what you're seeing for last year's fee is what was actually spent. So there might be a little bit of variation when you see what's spent at the end of the year. So we might spend a little bit um, more on structured assessment and a, a little bit less on the thematic work. So it's, it's, a, it's, it's not set in stone at, the, at this point. So, okay. Um, I can. Cast your minds back last year. Uh, was the proposal for last year's plan to spend something similar to thirty-eight thousand on structure assessment and something similar to forty-four thousand on the all wealth thematic work? Um, but things then just changed in the year. Or is it that more was done in one area and less in another? I suppose I'm just trying to understand: is the balance of work proposed for this year? changed or different to the balance of work that was proposed for last year? Well, last year we didn't, last year we didn't deliver the local work. Um, the, the, um, the annual commissioning review is the work from last, the, the year before. Um, the stuff that you're, you're seeing for the local work is a lot to do with our engagement as well and, and the work on our, so it's, I can, what I can do, it might be easier is if I, if I bring back a, a breakdown of the fee for you, is that is that that might be clearer if I did that? It hit me as well, exactly the same. Is is that are you happy for me to do that to, to bring back a, a clearer breakdown? Okay, so, sorry, Chair. Um, shall I come in with the rest of the report to finish off the, uh, presenting the rest of the report now? Is that okay? Yeah, so um, sorry, um, the confusion with regards to the, the performance orders fee, um, we'll, we'll get that sorted and, and we'll let the um, committee know. So um, coming on to the remainder of the report, um, just to finish off with the fees then, um, you would seen our fee consultation and in general our fees have increased 3.7 percent this year across the board um, but having a look at what we need to deliver the audits this year um, the proposal for your increase is only 0.9 percent um, so further to the detail that we'll we'll get back to you on and um, hopefully that is amenable to you um, with regards to the audit team, um, there have been a few changes this year in, in the senior level. Um, so Claire James is no longer involved um, at the engagement uh, director level. So Dave Thomas has taken over that role. Um, but you'll be familiar with, with Dave from his audit director role. And then Matthew Edwards is coming in as audit director for financial audit. 
So then it's myself and Andrew Doughton, um, the audit managers, and then Helen and Avisha are the leads as well. Okay, so the timetable our work is set up in exhibit five. Um, so the next main chunk of work really is the audit financial statements that will be um, our priority in May to report to the audit committee in June. And Avisha will be working with officers to set up those um, structured assessment um, interviews shortly. Okay, um, so I think that's, that's it. So we're happy to take any other questions. Okay, um, yes, thank you. Um, <clears throat> so obviously, um, I'm content with the, the audit fee being less than, than others, and I would expect us to say that. Um, I obviously, uh, we had the conversation about the local work that is now not obviously going to be done, and you, you um, said of each other that we will be having a refund for that. We originally said that um, you were going to um, hold some of it to see whether you needed it for the workforce piece. Has that changed? Yeah, when we was, we've been scoping the workforce um, review um, and we did see if we could use some of it, but I don't, I don't think it's possible. So I think the cleanest way to do it is if we refund that element. Um, yeah, then we can just kind of carry on with, with our program of work then. Well, thank you. I'm sure we are all quite the reduced for money somewhere. <laughs> so thank you for that. Okay, so um, are we happy to um, note the progress report and um, to approve the Audit Wales Audit Plan and fee? Yes. Yeah, thank you, Jonathan. Thank you. Um, are you going to go back now to the commissioning report? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, I'll present that one. So um, I'll take the report as read, but I'll um, just highlight a key, a few key points. So the review looked at whether um, the annual commissioning um, of health and education, health education and training was is well planned, supported by internal controls and appropriate resources, and has robust performance monitoring and oversight. So I'll, I'll, I'll take each bit in turn. So in terms of developing the annual commissioning plan, we found that HOW has a clear approach for developing the plan, um, which it's looking to strengthen further by aligning the planning processes for the commissioning plan and the IMTP. Um, HOW engages um, stakeholders as well as part of this process. Um, but whilst um, found that whilst a range of information is used to develop the commissioning plan, Health board IMTPs are the main source of information to determine student numbers and placements. Um, but the IMTPs are often of, of, of varying quality. I guess the issue here is that without robust, reliable workforce plan, HOW can't be confident that the identified workforce need at, reflects true need. Um, and as you know, we've just said that we'll be doing some in-depth work on workforce planning across the NHS. So we'll get more intelligence on that over the coming months. Um, there's also an issue with accessibility of benchmarking data to, to inform the, the commissioning process. But again, this is something HAW is um, working to improve with its counterparts in, in the home, home countries. Um, in terms of um, roles and responsibilities and internal controls. Um, we found that roles and responsibility to plan and manage the annual education contracts are clear. Um, and HOW has taken steps to strengthen resource weaknesses within the education commissioning and quality team. Um, we also found that there are appropriate internal controls for annual commissioning and clear arrangements to review and vary education contracts on a yearly basis. Um, and in terms of the contract um, and performance management, um, we found that there's a good framework for managing contract performance, which has been strengthened in the, the new, new contracts, which start in September. Um, but there's, there is scope to improve the quality of university improvement action plans, which we found were presented in kind of an in, inconsistent formats and were again of varying quality. Um, we also think there's scope to improve the administration of the contract business meetings by making sure draft minutes are circulated in a timely way. Um, 
And also we know that, that work is going on to strengthen the information provided to the board on the annual, on the delivery of the annual commissioning plan. Um, but there are opportunities to improve how performance is reported to the ECQ committee and also to triangulate the information um, presented in the All Wales Annual Performance Report and the Annual Quality Report to help understand trends and issues. Um, so the last thing I'll say is that we made five recommendations which focused on um, improving workforce information, the timeliness of the business contract meeting minutes, the consistency of the, and quality of the um, university action plan, and the triangulation of the, the, the two reports, the annual performance report and the, the quality reports, um, and also reporting to ECQ committee. Um, happy to take any questions. Um, if, if I could return to the, uh, the management uh, response, Chair, uh, particularly with re respect to recommendation one, um, the recommendation of, of Audit Wells was quite specific in, in terms of what HEIW should do. Uh, I'm just wondering, does the management response um, give you satisfaction that that recommendation is going to be implemented? I mean, I think I think the management response um, is written in a way which says that this work is ongoing. Um, but I think personally, it probably would be helpful to strengthen it a bit so that the actions are more specific. Because whilst our report um, our report does acknowledge that a breadth of information is used. For the plan, the main source of information is the work for is, is the IMTP, the workforce sections and the IMTPs, which probably HIW probably does need to work with Welsh government to try and strengthen. Um, I guess that the, the planning guidance. Then maybe yeah, I think I take your point that probably the management response probably could do with a little bit of strengthening to understand how specifically that's going to be tackled. Similar point actually, which was um, there was suggestion, um, and I wondered when we could expect um, a follow-up on those um, from the management and to come to the audit committee. Yeah. So with regards to that, we will capture the recommendations in the audit tracker. Uh, so Kevin, we've got no uh, no recommendations from uh, so from uh, um, so we'll update them. That's that's the, the mechanism by which we can record um, that we, we have completed and implemented recommendations. Um, with regards to the comments on the um, implementations of the uh, recommendations and that response, uh, th those are uh, tracked by uh, by HFW, but we do. We do to share them with, um, with Wales, and um, it's kind of a, it's a joint process to kind of agree what that looks like eventually. So, um, to take on board, but we should say that it's quite a good response. Okay, so um, we're going to Yes, given that the report's signed off uh, and the recommendations are signed off, um, I think probably when we come to the tracker, then um, we can. Take, take that on board then. Yes. 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 Yes Review. So I'm sure a lot of this will come out then as well. Give you good reason for doing the review. Yeah. <laughs> okay, lovely. All right. So is is that audit Wales complete? Yeah. Lovely. All right. Thank you very much. Okay, I'm going to make an executive decision and have a, a couple of minutes comfort break and coffee break, um, if that's okay with everybody.
um, and then return as near to 12 as people can make it so that gives people enough time to, to do whatever they need to do. Okay, see you in four or five minutes.
Thank you. Okay, sorry, sorry guys, it is 12.05, but I've lost my board secretary and my only other member of the committee, so I'm not quite sure where they've gone, but um, I can't really start because I'm not for it on my own. So I do apologise. Helen's still on. Yeah, hello, Navisha. Where's Claire's moved moved on to different audits now, is she? Can they hear us? Yeah. Hi, is it working now? Yeah, great. Um, yes, Claire's and um, it. There's been a, a round of um, internal promotions and kind of reorganisation. So, um, yeah, it's been a little bit of a shuffle round of um, audit portfolios and needed um, just to make sure that there's um, a distribution across Wales and between the different sectors and things for the audit directors. So, unfortunately, that meant that um, she needed to move off HIW. But she's still very much involved. <laughs> still tapping into her knowledge. So. Good. Okay. Right. So I've now got I'm now chorus again and my board secretary. So we can so we can break. Um okay, counter fraud um progress report. I'm looking to Nigel and Gareth here. Thank you. Thank you, Chair. Uh, firstly, I'd like to introduce Gareth, who's the, the new manager of the counter fraud um, department here, Cardiff and Vale, which provides services to uh, your organisation. Uh, as far as the report is concerned, the, um, the key points from it really are that uh, on the good news note, um, there are no investigations at all linked to HEIW. Um, all the days that have been allocated for counter fraud work to the organisation have been completed. Um, presentations, we've managed to continue those um, despite the hurdles and everything of face-to-face -face presentations with COVID. We've done it through teams. We've maintained that throughout the year and we have um, more presentations booked in now every month until September. Uh, the unit, um, our unit is uh, now fully resourced um, and we have completed the risk assessment, which we did across several organisations um, in Wales on the checks carried out by um, employment agencies before they provide staff to the NHS. So that was all done and the, the report is attached, no, the risk assessment report is attached to the progress report. And uh, they all came out very well. There was only one um, slight misunderstanding between the organisation and, and an agency where both were relying on the other to sort of carry out some robust checks, but that's been addressed and, and can certainly um, be included in any requests going, um, going back to the agencies in the future. That really is a, is a brief run through of the counter fraud work done for this period. The annual report um, uh, asking for a delay on that to be presented to the committee uh, until the next meeting in May. This is due to uh, um, Gareth now coming into position as new manager, but also the Counter Fraud Authority have released a brand new three year strategy, um, which we haven't seen yet. And a lot of the, pro, um, the annual plan will have to sort of um, align with that in a, in a large way. And also, uh, we're waiting for the the final quarter four report from um, Counter Fraud Authority, Counter Fraud Service Wales to be um, published. And then with that, we can combine it and then look at a, at submitting the annual plan for the organization then for the next committee meeting in May. But other than that, I'm more than happy to take any questions in relation to the reports. No questions, I'm certainly happy for uh, the plan to be deferred until the meeting in May. Uh, just in terms of this, um, uh, this particular document it, it's, it's really clear and it, it, I'm just really assured by, uh, by what's been contained in it so thank you very much thank you um, just a couple from me um, we had 15 
days allocated to investigations. Obviously, there weren't any. What was that 15 days used for? Uh, we used that up in the risk assessment. That took um, quite some time, um, actually longer than we anticipated because uh, we're relying on so many third parties and it taken further information each time we had a little bit more information, if that makes sense. Um, so the days that were allocated to investigation, we used those up as part of the risk assessment and then used them up with presentations as well. The structure of the um, progress report is something that needs to, will be discussed. Um, and Gareth, I think, is making plans to um, meet with the... Uh, um, Rhiannon to address the way then the layout and, and how these days are allocated um, from here on in. Okay, thanks, thanks. And um, yes, um, I understand the delay in the plan, but um, and happy for that um, this year. But as a general rule, I think it would be good for the audit committee to have plans before the beginning of the year for everybody. Yeah, if, well, if I can just come in on that, they, th that will be the normal course of action. But obviously, as I only started in the role five days ago, that was impossible. And from my perspective, I would like to be involved in the planning of the counter fraud provision for the upcoming year, because I will be um, responsible for managing it. So that, that literally is the delay this year. But I can assure you that that will be done um, from here on in. Yeah, I'm, I'm sure as a committee we'd want uh, Gareth, we'd want you to review what's gone on and 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 you know input into that. So perfectly understandable, and it was for everybody's plans. I mean, Paul and um, Helen and Navisha will know that the, the committee are keen to have plans um, before the year actually starts for for everybody. Um, just as general rule i think we've had a couple of exceptional years but i think we, we ought to be we're not back to normal but as near as <laughs> near as we're ever going to get probably to normal so okay thank you thank you for that um and thanks very much um nigel for uh, <coughs> you are obviously staying with the team oh yes yeah yeah they won't get rid of me that quickly no <laughs> That's good. Okay, then. Thank you very much, both. Um, so we've got quite a few items left on the agenda. David's reminding me that we've got quite a few items left on the agenda. So we'll rattle through them now. So um, review of the annual report, um, including the government's statement. David. Um, and any verbal draft
board, will it not for endorsement or not? It will go to main board. Right, okay. So it will come back to the opportunity to follow. Okay, thank you. Thank you, David. Um, so moving on to um, the information governance and information management reports. I see uh, Dr. Kiddy is put past sort of Dolly Yard and Dolly Yard. I'll tell you a story about the book of death, the book of death. Or Cavar or Plessa or Cavar or Dina with a mouth. Mark Nodder or Cavar or Dina with a mouth. 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 Ac yn ail o ran sefyllfa o ran adroddiad llywodraethu cyfodaeth a rheoli cyfodaeth, cadrhau yn ystod y cyfnod gwetha o'n i wedi derbyn pedwar cais rhwng cyfodaeth, wedi dod i law ac yn bod i wedi ymateb i pobl i'n rhaid i o fewn y cyfnod cyn ffurfio sens ac yn diwrnod gwaith. No questions. No questions. Um, I suppose um, it's just by way of a suggestion um, on this particular report. Um, it it it's comprehensive and it covers um, many of the areas. The the thing I was searching for a little bit was the progress against some of the issues rather than um, just what was discussed. So I just wondered if we could tweak it a little bit to show what's being achieved, any deadlines um, that we need. Because the, what's front of mind was um, we're submitting, um, what's the um, one that Sean's submitting to get the so level? The, site of the, the checklist for... Uh, yeah. And I, I couldn't see any update on that, and um, I thought it was going in at the end of March, but it may have been there, but I just didn't see it. It is there. So yeah, it says that we, it says about the levels, but I wasn't quite sure where we were on the, um, on the journey of getting a, a review done and our score back and, and all the rest of it. So. Yeah, so it, it, it is self-assessment, so we're self-assessing ourselves as a, as a level two, uh, which is a fantastic result given the way the scoring works, because if you only just play with one, you're quite yeah. enough to then it's a, a level one. Um, and um, I know that we'll be bringing back a report uh, onto the next week. Uh, yeah, okay. Thank you very much, Harvey. It's, it's very helpful. Um, so we've come a long way, actually, on yeah. this particular um, topic. Okay. That's really helpful. I'll take more comments. And yeah. we'll okay. So happy to note the contents of the report for assurance. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So moving on to the review of the committee effectiveness. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go and push go. Come on, do it. 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 Come on, Yn unol am rhywbeth o sefydlog, gan ni fod mae'r mae'r pwysgod yn gorfod cynnal i'n anasesiad yn flynyddol. Felly, gofyn am sylwadau ar y ddogfe a gofyn am gefnogaeth o pwysgod i gymryd rhywbeth cynnwys. Mi fyddwn ni'n gofyn i lodau llenwyr y papur erbyn y chweched a rhi cynnau eglwys os gwrs yn dda. Beth yw'n ni'n gallu o gyd i ddod o papur ar y mater i'r gwaith nesra o'r gwylltgod yn mis mai. Just one question. I think the checklist, by the way, is super, it's quite a detailed way of trying to answer the the full question, but I, you know, being familiar with the NAO checklist, it's uh, I see where you've drawn this from. Yes. Um, what 
one of the things that I think that doesn't get captured perhaps in the way that it could, and that is like individual contributions. I, I know this is an evaluation of the committee, but the committee only works with people, individuals are making a contribution. And I'm just wondering, uh, and again, not having not gone through the appraisal or the evaluation process here before, but in other environments, I'm aware that you have perhaps a, a set of questions, perhaps fairly broad questions for individual members to, to fill in and say, well, what has been your contribution? What have you, what have you, what have you, what do you feel you've contributed in the last 12 months? What is it you might feel you'd be offering by way of contribution in the next 12 months? Are there any yeah. skills or training needs that could be identified? Um, and I think then that conversation about the committee effectiveness as a whole brings it together. But I think it's it is useful to assess. And I wasn't quite sure if that was done as part of the chairs of process so that's that's with individual members. So that's that's where it's covered, isn't it? Yes. Um, um, right, fine. Okay. But I think it's a really good point and making sure that we we do cover that off in the chair's appraisal and that it's triangulated so that it does feed in because mm. I, I think we cover it, but I'm not sure how well it feeds in to this. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so I think I think yeah, rather than do it twice. Yeah. The right. yeah. Thank you. I only have one quick question. Um, Question 11, is that new or was it there last year? It was there last year. Because I don't recall that being the chair's responsibility in terms of induction of new members. I just don't recall. I, I, I wrote it down because I didn't realise it was my responsibility. So, <laughs> so the answer last year was that we didn't, although we have. Uh, but just a challenge for the moment. Okay, have a second one. Yeah, yes. we can double check. Although, although, Chair, we can, we can give a much positive, we can give a, um, we can actually put that in place now because last year we, we had have, that, but, so. but it, yeah. So, we, have, we can have that. To remove the second half. Yeah, Okay, thank you. Um, and um, so we're asked to approve the content um, subject to. I think Jonathan's suggestion that we bring in the individual uh, bits from the um, appraisal by the chair. Okay. Making sure that we take due cognizance yeah. of individual contribution, learning. Chair, yeah, just, yeah. just a very quick observation. I, I, I think part of the, the, the risk of the in the in the appraisal process is that as board members are being appraised. Uh, in terms of their own contribution by the chair, very often that appraisal tends to get focused very heavily on their board function. Yes. And sometimes the committee bit is almost as, as an add on. But, oh, we can't forget to talk about the committee, can we? And then it's always a bit at the end of the, of, the, of, the, of the chat. I think we've got to make sure we're covering it fairly, you know, as, as strongly as possible in what, in what the chair discusses with individual members. Otherwise, the focus is always heavily towards, towards board. I think that that balance yeah. 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 See, actually, we have a discussion with the chair. Yes, because we are about that. Okay. Um, moving on then to the audit and assurance committee annual report. The flip side of this one. It's two ten. So, I'm going to the first question. I'm going to go to Cristiano Frost did a new stretcher. Very many days, I didn't very much get back to the battle. You know, I can only get a push going to dash and a hundred. And I wish them to have a push going to come in a three hour job. Yes, one of those with the other side of the game. Thank you. 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 Thank 
it's, it's, it's difficult to offer comments on a, a report for a period of time for which I was not a member of the committee. Um, but, but in terms of the overall contract and structure, it's, it's what I'd expect to see in the, in the annual report. But I think beyond that, Jill, I think it's probably sensible for other members yeah. to, okay. to contribute just to make sure it covers off what was done by the committee last year. And I think we have that, Mr. Chair, and I think we ought to ask the room um, to contribute to that um, and really tidy as well. Um, so are we happy to um, approve that subject to um, comments from, from others by when? Um, if we could have them uh, into a sign by the 26th of April, please. 26th of April um, for comments. Any comments, obviously, from um, audit um, and counter fraud be welcome. Obviously, you, you attend the committees and also um, this X around, around the table. I'm sure you've already contributed. <laughs> okay, thank you very much. Moving on to the corporate risk register. Corporal <laughs> Uh, man of a tree risk uh, newydd, um, ymwneud and for high Uch Nadisco, I can all have a problem with the second high Gerda, Arkever, Mudagon, Lato, Isikai, or Shaded, Ara Hester, Vlanwir, Mudagon. I see Papir, you were still in my So. Yeah. Thank you, Chair. Just, uh, just one really quick question. Um, David, on the introductory paper at 2.2, top point 2.3, um, there are no risks with either an increased score or a de decreased score. Um, just by way of what would normally be captured in the report, if, for example, in a future report, um, there was a risk with an increased score, what else would you what, what else would be included uh, in the report to give the context of that? Um, we would I identify, well, obviously identify at risk and explain why there's been an increase in score. And if there's been an increased score, we'd also highlight uh, what mitigating actions we're, we're putting in place. It's usually the case uh, that it goes in the other direction, but again, we would confirm that this is the risk that's gone down and explain why, why it's gone down. So it's just put it into context. So. Thanks, Jonathan. I mean, um, I know we, we took this at the board, but um, there are three new red risks, which is alarming. Um, and they seem to have um, almost come from nowhere. So were they never green or amber risks at any point during the year? They just suddenly become red. So the, the process that we have, um, so they, they would have come from the directorate risk register. Um, so there, there's, there's, a, there's a process there whereby um, for escalating issues onto the corporate stretches, so obviously you've got a number of direct yeah. registers. Um, and the process is that the, 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 the individual directors determine whether they feel that uh, an item should be escalated in the corporate stretch term. There's a number of factors that we take into account to decide whether it should be escalated in the corporate stretch term. Um, and, and those include uh, that the director doesn't feel that they can manage that particular risk by themselves, whether they need additional uh, support from the other directorates, whether additional resources required. Uh, and the other element would be, does it uh, represent a um, risk to the reputation of HF as well? So that that's the process by which uh, mass risk is caused. So they, they would have be on the direct risk register. So at this moment in time, uh, it's felt that it should be on the core risk register as well. I'm heartened um, to hear that that's all working. <laughs>
<laughs> well, we, 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 we've, um, it, it, it's perfect time for that question because we've got actually substantial assurance focusing yeah. on yeah. this particular yeah. director of the medical <laughs> director in terms of uh, the process does work at that level as well. Yeah. Okay, lovely. Thank you. All right. Um, moving. Oh, sorry. We're asked to note the, the report in respect of the corporate risk register for assurance. And and note, is there anything you want to say about the strategic risks? We've had those up No, it's just for noting for assurance that going forward, um, the strategic risk will, will be contained uh, as a part of the corporate stretch going forward so that we've got uh, clear sight of that at the uh, corporate meeting. I know I've commented on the strategic risks outside of the meeting. You okay with that, Jonathan? Yeah, okay. All right, moving on to the audit recommendations tracker. Um, system track your commodity agonist young gun, uh, a queen of the Mono, a Casano. I've been a brief like a ransom or either again or a commissiate, a system track your a queen of a queen of a poor being on into a pita, a commissiate gun, a queen of Mono. Or tidy keen mind of the quick assessing word of the name Gobby Pushko, Caratar, Tenefini, or the R. Um, uh, Govester, um, Massaith, Arkamesia, the Huir, uh, Maniverheim, Namraid, our process to pizza, a death of, um, I come up with them in track the, um, and a mice from Arhan or Kanshim, can we said, uh, I still get a quick quiet and all the mis hackers. Uh, especially the governor of the not the um, just just one quick question on it. Happy to approve as well, but there are quite a few overdue still. And um, I hear that there are about recruitments um, that they've been overdue for quite a while and related to recruitments. Is there anything that needs to be done to expedite the actions? I uh, I don't expect that they they will continue on the. So I, I know that the, the, the good work has been undertaken uh, in that area. And I, I, um, I, I know that so um, they're quite close to closing off. All right, I'll hold you to that. Okay. <laughs> okay, so the committee is asked to note the report, consider the progress, and approve that the greens are removed. Okay, you'll be done. Thank you. Okay, um, moving on to part three. Um, there are no reports for information. Um, I haven't been notified of any other business. Has anybody got any other business? No? Okay, so the date of the next meeting is Thursday, the 5th of May, um, primarily for the draft accounts or solely for the Yeah, draft? sorry. Can I make okay. can... Oh, sorry, 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 sorry. Can't see a hand. Can I so, just give a brief update to the committee with regard to the audit fee, if that's okay, just to clear off the matter now? Um, or would you prefer it just written? Yes. Could, could, could we just have it submitted by email? Okay. Yeah, sure. I will circulate it to all members. Lovely. Thank you. Okay, so primarily for the accounts, but obviously um, other things if need be. Um, and we'll hold it in T Dusky and remote as well. Okay. Thank you very much. So, meeting closed. Um, I think um, those of you on the screen need to log off now and log back on for the closed session. So, thank you very much, everyone. Thanks.